2017, tablets are becoming less and less popular. More so because Apple has kind of monopolized the market with their iPads, and most other companies are kind of just left in the dust. And even with Apple, their iPads are more and more becoming like hybrid computers versus just straight up tablets. With that all being in mind, I'm gonna be reviewing the LG G Pad 4 and exactly why it exists in 2017. So without any further ado, let's get right into this video. Now, just starting off with that display, this screen is beautiful and you can't expect anything worse because it's LG. They make TVs for crying out loud and some pretty good ones at that. Honestly, LG's done an amazing job here with the screens, allowing it for it to have those really deep blacks and a really, really nice color gambit. It's been a pleasure to view content on over the past little bit and it's an 8 inch QHD display and to be honest with you, I really like that 8 inch form factor but it's in the typical 16 by 9 aspect ratio with the really big bezels. I don't know how I feel about those bezels, I don't really like them, and I feel like in an 18 by 9 aspect ratio, we would have been able to get rid of those bezels and implement a narrower and longer screen that's a little bit more grippable in one hand. So what do I mean by the 16 by 9 aspect ratio versus the 18 by 9? Basically, 16 by 9 is what is on your computer screen, and 18 by 9 is what's on the iPhone 10. The difference is 18 by 9 is narrower and it lets the screen be a little bit taller, therefore making it a little bit more pummelable. Versus 16 by 9 which is a little bit wider and harder to hold in your hand. Personally, I think that the LG G Pad 4, if it had an 18 by 9 aspect ratio display, would be a lot better because it would make it a lot more pummelable. Quickly touching on design, you can look all the way around and see a full plastic shell. I'm not really about the plastic. I don't like it because it's a fingerprint magnet. I don't really like it. I feel like it looks kind of weird. I also don't like this modular piece on the back. So there's a small little indent on the back that's meant to put modular devices, which is a great addition and really does make it unique. But I feel like they could have implemented it a little bit better because the actual indent on the back is not something that I like. But if you look at the side of it, there are some things that I do like, and that's that customizable button that I can use to set to whatever I want. And I set mine to Netflix because I did use this for a lot of media consumption. It's also great to see a small SIM card and a micro SD card tray on the side as well. But as I mentioned also with the screen, I don't like those big bezels on the top and the bottom. Though it is great to use when it comes to holding in landscape and watching videos, I feel like there could be some software integration to help that be minimized so the bezels can be a little bit smaller. But that's just me. Now the battery life is amazing. I literally charged this device once all week and it worked throughout the week with no issues, except for one time when I faced a little bit of an overheating issue where it just got really hot. But it's nothing too big to worry about because my big issue here is the fact that it uses a micro USB cable for file transfer and charging. In 2017, USB-C has become the standard. And if you're gonna still use a micro USB port, it honestly just takes you a step backwards. LG, please start implementing USB-C in your devices. It makes your environment a lot more cohesive, and I'd love to see it in your next iteration of the tablet. Now, moving into the speakers, they are trash. It's a single firing driver, and I felt like it really didn't offer much bass or clarity whatsoever. But here's where the tablet does end up shining. It has an extra modular piece that connects to the back that adds a stand, speaker, USB port, and even extra battery life. It's pretty awesome. It offers a pretty decent amount of clarity and bass and the extra battery life plus the extra USB port does make this tablet look a little more attractive to those trying to take this on long road trips. But I do feel that LG should have implemented better speaker system to begin with just because if you're going to spend money on a tablet where you're going to watch a lot of video, you might want to have a nice speaker to go along with it, but that's just me. So now it comes to the end of the video where I give you guys my conclusion. Exactly why should you guys buy this? Well, for me, I don't think you should buy it. In 2017, tablets have become a form of technology that no one really uses. If you buy a tablet, more likely than not, you're gonna buy it and then get a keyboard for it for you actually to do some productivity work and stuff like that. But I think with the LG G Pad 4, you can't really do that. For myself, I found myself even straying away from it and going over to my computer and watching videos there versus watching it on a small screen. I just didn't see any use for it, but that may just be me. So make sure you guys check it out in person too and maybe play around with it if you guys can because my opinions may differ from yours. With that being said, everyone, I really do hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please make sure to like this video by clicking that thumbs up button down below. Comment down any feedback that you guys do have. Share this video if you guys want to teach someone something new. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. So, hi, welcome. And that's about it. Thank you guys all so much for watching one more last, one last time. And I'll see you guys all later.